episode of SPL Social with me, Ash from Futbolita. And of course, today we are doing a very fan special with the guys from Sailor Fan Talk once again. Thank you for Eddie us. and Joseph. And we are here at, you know, the WPL home ground. But I just want to say thank you guys for taking the time to join me because we're going to wrap the season up proper for the Sailors. So I'm going to start with you guys first. Out of 10, like, how much would you rate the season? <laughs> the season... Um... Of the SPL season, I mean, for Sailors. Wow. I'll, I'll give it, at the start, maybe a 2-3. <laughs> then towards the end, it's here a good 9-10. A good 9-10, yeah. Eddie, for yourself? I, I think a 7. I think there was a lot of exciting moments, so that's always good. And that's as fans, we want the exciting moments and the big transfers and everything. Um, but obviously, we didn't win, so you got to deduct points for that. So I think it's a 7. A 7. Speaking of we didn't win, I mean, obviously, congrats to Albrecht for winning the title. We've got to be honest that they, be, they were very consistent. Joseph? Thoughts on, on Albrecht winning the title? I think Albrechts are just a class apart. Like, year on year, they come with a fresh bunch of uh, 11 players and they turn up every single year, right? Um, I think huge props to this system that they have working for them. And you can see the boys always keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. I think that's something that uh, us local, our local players can learn a lot. This attitude, this mentality to have when we play into games. Um, but really props to Albrechts for this hard work, this attitude, and definitely there is uh, success. It is something, like, it, there must be a reason why the past four years they are winning, right? Yeah. And for yourself, um, you know, Albrecht's winning the title, your, your thoughts? I mean, congrats to them, but I think that it's, it's something to be said also about the state of Singapore football. Uh. I think it's not just LBRX that has done well, it's Japanese football as a whole. Mm -hmm. That is taking the world by storm, Women's World Cup, Men's World Cup, everywhere. So. When the system thrives, then obviously they are going to also do very well on the SPL. You know, when LBRX first came, they were not title contenders. La. So, yes, the system works, but I think it's the Japanese football system that has kept on going higher, whereas the Singapore football state probably has not progressed as much. La. So, moving on a little bit to what you guys do, Sailor Fan Talk, I know great stuff you guys have been putting out there. So, you know, maybe you can share with us a little bit more about, you know, your highlights of, of Sailor Fan Talk, what you guys enjoyed the most about this season. Okay, so I think this year we, we did something special. We, we had the opportunity to get these media passes for SPL where we interview our players. Uh, we ask questions after the games from these players and we got we had this experience of even uh, interviewing people like uh, Richario. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we still haven't got Maxim. Uh. Yeah. That's, the, that's the one player that we haven't got yet, but soon. Uh, soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, so many players. We even I think we even got the privilege of going to the Spurs versus mm. LCS game, game yeah. to really uh, walk down with all these first players. It was a huge privilege. La. And I think this guy here, I think I have to give a huge <laughs> shout out to him. The articles, whatever you see online, this guy played a huge part in it. Uh, and I think um, we are very thankful to everybody who have been supporting us mm. in this journey. Uh, not say we're very big or anything, la, but uh, yeah, we appreciate all the support. And I think ultimately what the reason why we started this is really to push Singapore football somewhere. And we wanted to make a change. La. We wanted to do something, make our voice be heard so that people can do something. So it doesn't just stop with us, la, hopefully. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think just to add on, I think it's quite heartening also to see some other clubs. There are also other fans who have decided to start um, writing articles on websites and all that. There's also more interest in the women's game, I think, now. Um, obviously, it's not down to us. It's the Women's World Cup and also all the other clubs putting in the time and the infrastructure to grow the women's game. But I think every platform has to highlight that the women's game is just as worth covering mm -hmm. as the men's game. So when it becomes a norm, then you will see the sexist comments slowly stop and then I think there's a chance for Singapore's women football to progress as well. Yeah. No, I agree about the sexist comments. Um, but yeah, I mean, great stuff you guys have been putting out there. So I'm looking forward to seeing more from Sailor Fan Talk because we still have a couple more games left. We've got, we've got the Singapore Cup and you guys got the AFC Champions League. So let's talk about the AFC Champions League draw, guys. Of course, the Sailors are set to face, you know, three stellar opponents. I believe you've got Kichi FC, you've got Jumbo Hyundai and Bangkok United. Joseph, what do you think of that draw? Well, I, 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 I think we were pretty lucky. Uh, it was quite a favourable draw, la, <laughs> in my opinion. Compared to last year? Compared we, we don't know lah. I, I think last year we the win was we took us by surprise. We didn't expect us to win that game. Uh, and this year I think 
we are going with a lot of optimism, especially how we have ended the league season so far. Uh, a lot of things for us to look forward to, our new players starting to gel together, work together, uh, and our manager. Uh, I think we have seen a lot of change from the previous manager. And now there's some form of identity in the team. And I think uh, that gets the Sailors fan very excited and we are really looking forward to it. I think a lot of people have been messaging us and messaging in the groups and everything. Hey, when you want to fly? You want to fly oh. Bangkok? You want to fly to <laughs> Hong Kong and all this? So, I don't know, maybe you will see us uh, filming players in Hong Kong, in Bangkok. You, you don't know lah. You don't know. Let's see. Still, still in the plans, Eddie, to go cover the AFC? No, definitely in the plans. I, if my wife is watching this, please allow me to go all three <laughs> games. But uh, yeah, I don't think she'll allow me to go all three lah. So, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. If you choose one, where would she want to go? If, if I had to choose one, one game, I think I would pick uh, Kichi actually. Oh, Why? Hong because Kong. I haven't been to Hong Kong. The last time I went there was like when I was one year old. So it's mm. been, I haven't been there in like 20 plus, 30 years. So, And the last time I went there, I broke my foot. So oh, thanks dear. mom for that as well. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> and so it would be nice. And I think also it's very nice. To, I want to speak to Kim again, Kim Shin Wook. Yeah, it, it would be Shin nice Shin. to see him. I, I think um, he received a lot of flag even from our own supporters last year. But I don't think he was as bad as people made him out, made him out to be. La. So yeah, it would be nice to see him. Mm. Nice. Expectations from this year's uh, AFC Champions League. What would you like to see the sailors, you know, achieve? I think we don't want to have so high hopes because it's the hope that kills, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I think for me personally, um, performance lah. I, I would be more focused on performance, how we match ourselves up against these uh, opponents that we are facing up against. Yeah, I think that would be the emphasis rather than result for me. Yourself, Eddie? Yeah, I think more of the same. Actually, um, last year, I think the, the team really inspired us. So, aside from the losses to Urawa, where I think they were quite clearly a class apart, even against Daegu, and you know, these players on paper are definitely better, but uh, we did not look like we were overawed by them and everything. So, hopefully, more of the same. And I think we Sailors fans will be proud, lah, regardless of the result. Yeah. You know, I just want to talk a little bit, you know, about the beginning of the season. We had this discussion as well. I remember on the Sailors Media Day out, and a lot has changed since then. We've got to admit. Firstly, let's talk about Kodai Tanaka. You know, what a great signing, you know, at the beginning of the season. But unfortunately, he was down with the ACL. He's still in recovery. So, you know, get well soon, Kodai. But what you know, are your thoughts from, you know, the beginning of the season until now? You know, like, anything that you wish could have been different, maybe, Joseph? So many things, right? So many things. Uh, I think everybody wanted to see Kodai play. Everybody was expecting Kodai to be the top scorer again this year. But things happen. Things happen. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't get the privilege of really getting to embrace watching Kodai uh, grace the field for us. Lah. But I think um, we have uh, one more season to look forward to. Hopefully, he stays with us. Uh, hopefully, he fills up the player slot to play for us next season. And then we can see what we can do with Kodai in our team as the top man. Thoughts on the signings as well, besides Kodai? I mean, are you happy with the foreign signings? Oh, I think definitely. I think everyone has been very enthused um, by Rishiro Zivkovic signing, right? Hui Piresh as well. I think, you know, you you saw him against Spurs and I think everyone is so excited because they're thinking like, wow, if he could do that against like Spurs, then perhaps, you know, we can go even further this time in the Asian Champions League. So very, very enthused by it. And a big shout out, of course, I mean, not just the foreigners, right? But a big shout out to Abdul Razak, who's also a signing that sometimes people forget. They think that, you know, he has always been with us. It's not true. He just came this season. And of course, Kodai took all the the headlines and everything mm. but you know he stepped in so admirably and I think he's a top local scorer and so really shout out to him he gr he grasped his opportunity with both hands yeah Joseph anything to add about the other signings? the other signing who else do you sign? Wow, too many there were a lot as well too many Bailey, Bailey just came in as uh, well Bailey, uh, Bailey we, we, we had the privilege of interviewing Bailey right so we we actually interviewed Bailey on his first game and what happened in the first game <laughs> he red got a red card <laughs> right um, what a solid solid lad you know to be so mature about him being able to just uh, talk to us even after getting the red card. I think uh, when he was talking to us, he said how that this opportunity for him to learn to understand mm. the game, and I think uh, that really speaks volume of his experience and what he has learned from playing uh, in such a professional level. And I, I think not say that Singapore football is better or anything, but there's a, it's a totally different aspect of the game, like the physicality aspect. Uh, probably in uh, when he's in the English Premier League or in the Championship. It's a lot more physical game, but when you come into Singapore, even a little tap, a little push, then the player goes down, and then you get a foul and red cards and yellow cards here and there. Yeah. So something that he had to learn, and I, I'm, I, I guess he'll slowly improve and adapt to it along the way, lah. So I'm really excited to 
Yeah. And you know what's funny as well? You guys know that he trained under Ange Poseca Glue at uh, Spurs as well. So fantastic player, coach as well. And some, you know, some aspects, guys. Listen, let's talk about Singapore Cup right now. You know, this is a real opportunity for you guys to win a trophy. Eddie, what what are your thoughts on the prospects of winning the Singapore Cup? I think so. I wrote on the I wrote on the website. I think in the article we said that actually it was a very favorable draw. Not because we are underestimating our opponents, um, but in actually all nine encounters against Balestia Haugang and Tanjong Paga this season, we've won all the games. So I think even on paper, on the pitch, we should be beating them again and qualifying for the semis. Lah. And of course, we will then face outbreaks or Tampanese, but I think we've shown this season that we can beat these two teams. So especially because you know everyone is um, giving Elbrex uh, a, a, a lot of credit for what they've done this season which they absolutely deserve I think the sailors need to get back some pride and show that actually on their day they can beat Elbrex as well and do it again yeah okay fair enough about beating Elbrex that game was one hell of a game let me just put it out there the day yeah. you know the comeback and everything and you know there's always a question of if Elbrex were to win the Singapore Cup then who will they face in the community <laughs> Sure, which is quite funny, which it's is you guys like technically, right? right? Yeah. Which I, I don't know so much about whether that would make sense. I always think that you know, as a realist of football, you want the winner to meet another winner as well. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So then my question comes to, do you think that, you know, in the Singapore Cup should have a relegation, whereas like, whereas, you know, like a Prime League team or another Singapore League team or to join? Because this is a big question mark as well. Why are we only having SPL teams in the Singapore Cup? Yeah, fair point. I think, I think there's a brilliant... I, I never entertained this thought before, right? Um, but I think a lot of logistics has to come into play when we think about all these aspects uh, whether these teams can really step up but it, it, it's a brilliant opportunity for them to showcase what their steel is made of and all these other things so I think it's a good idea to entertain and maybe something we can consider for future FAS can consider lah. Yeah. It's so interesting, I was having a chat about this just one hour ago with my friends and um, I, I said, you know, it's a possibility. If you let all these teams come in, I think there's a chance that scorelines might get really ugly. But how about if you have a separate tournament where all of them, all these SFL and IWL teams just fight it out and only one representative gets to play for the right to qualify to this tournament. So yep. for example, the bottom of the league, Young Lions, they'll face off against these guys. And if somehow these SFL champions win, Right, then they get their place in the cup instead, not the young lions. I think it's something to be considered definitely. It will also give something that give give a bit of um, encouragement for the public to come down for SFL and IWL games as well, just to see the standard and everything. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So before we go, I mean, I just want to say thank you for all the insights. I just want to talk a little bit about the under 23s because I'm sure you guys know that Vietnam won the AFF under 23 yesterday um, after beating Indonesia on penalties, and Singapore was nowhere to be seen. Of course, we didn't send a team there, right? So. While our neighbours are doing so fantastically well, where are we right now, Joseph? Um, and our, obviously, our, our team is currently in Thailand, I believe, doing you know some friendly games. But you know, moving forward, what would you like to see from our, from our young lions, from our under 23 team? Do we need to go and get in there and compete, or do you think we should just sit it out now? I think it's a complicated issue altogether. There's no right or wrong answer. I would say, um, they, each each has its pros and each has its cons. Um, I think the FA has their reasons for doing why they did the things they did. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it boils back to results. Uh, if what you do brings results, I think the people will be supportive about it. So I think very important, what are we doing in this Thailand training camp, right? If this training camp helps our boys perform. So I think they're training for the games, upcoming for, games for, in the... Yeah, for yeah, games. Right? Yeah. So, Really, it boils down to the performances in those games. Lah. Whether the boys really show up, what have they learned from this training, and was this training really effective, uh, giving them the opportunity to just uh, mm. not go for this tournament that they pulled out from. Yeah. I think Joseph's very kind. La. I mean, the FA, I think they have a lot of questions to answer about yeah. this. It's complete, complete nonsense, if you ask me. Mm. You, On one hand, you say that the players don't have enough experience. On the other, you pull them out of um, a tournament where, yes, they are going to get whacked, right? I don't, I don't think people expect um, anything fantastic from the boys, like they were semi-finals or finals or anything. But just because they're going to get whacked, you pull them out, I think that's nonsense. La. Mm. And if you say that um, it's because there are other tournaments and you want the, and everything, then I think I think that just goes to show the talent pool is not deep enough, right? But even if the talent pool is not deep enough, is it not worth sending the talents who are not as good to compete as well? I mean, for years, Brunei and Laos, they've been sending their, their, their representatives, I mean, and they've been getting whacked left, right, centre. So why do we have this divine right to
to go in and expect not to get whacked. If we get whacked, we get whacked. Then we come back and we and fight. we fight. Yeah. So fight till the end, which is what I hope Sailor Fan Talk continues to do. You know, I just want to say thank you so much, Joseph and Eddie, for joining me today. You guys have been brilliant and I really have been enjoying your interviews and everything. Thank you for being the light in Singapore football. We need more of you guys around. So before we go, maybe can you get a quick word to all the Singapore fans watching this? You know, <laughs> Singapore fans. Uh, I think you all saw what we could do against even a team like Spurs. In the first half, we, we were 1-0. Eh. They only scored through a penalty in extra time, 45 minutes, you're up. Um, so we have we have what it takes, right? But I think the fans, we also have to play a part to make this atmosphere something that we can be proud about. So please do come down, please watch our games. And if, if possible, please do support Sailor Fan Talk also. Um, and really, any team at all, like Hong Kong, Tampines, I, I know we hate them, lah, but <laughs> <laughs> if you all support local football, go ahead, right? Come and watch, come and make your voice be heard, and let's hope that Singapore football, Singapore football like, makes it one day, lah, right? And don't forget the women too. I mean, the games are free, so no excuse. Go and watch. Um, I think it's always nice for kids to learn that there are many levels of football to be played, not just the Premier League in the team, uh, I mean, in, in the country or even in the world. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. You know, if you guys see them around, come and say hi. They're at every Sailors game. Once again, thank you so much, Joseph and Eddie. And of course, all the best to LCS for ACL as well as the Singapore Cup. Do, of course, continue to support local football. I'm Ash from Footballita and I'll see you guys next time.